This is July 12th, 2021. We're going to talk about the importance of sight in the end time, especially at this juncture. We'll start with a short recording. is not something that we can choose to do. We cannot determine to see and then see. There is a, a connection between setting your heart and willing to see but in the final analysis, God is the one who opens that door. You cannot do it through sheer determination. Sight does not come that way. Sight is truly a function of the conjunction of the spirit and soul and body. And even your spirit as much as it may see, it also is limited. You could say, well, my spirit sees all and knows all. Yet the unwrapping that we're experiencing and going through is not only an unwrapping of our conscious mind and our present incarnation, but it's an unwrapping of our spirit. People think that just because someone is in the spirit, like angels or the cloud of witnesses, that they know everything, and they do not. Sight is a, a process, whether you're in the spirit or it involves your spirit or this level of consciousness on this plane. God is the one that opens the door within you, puts the key in, and unlocks the door for you to be able to see. And sight is at the, at the crux of everything in the end time. That's why Satan has fought the sun so diligently Because everything is wrapped around the ability to see and to do and to become. When you see him, you will be like him, for you will see him as he is. That's scripture. But you must see the Lord. We have all seen the Lord to a measure, and to a measure, we have changed. But there is so much yet that must unfold. Resurrection life, I feel, is a product of sight. If you see it, then you possess it. God may say, Resurrection, life is here. Resurrection is in your midst. You have resurrection. But you must see it. We know that Christ is the resurrection, but you must see the Lord <clears throat> on that level for it to become a reality for you. We have not seen the Lord deep enough yet for that level of change to happen. Probably the greatest focus against the saints of light during this time is to keep them in darkness as much as possible, to 
get them to a level of of passivity where they cease pursuing, where they don't realize that as much as they see, there is yet so much to be seen. And you have to be careful not to get to to rest in your achievements, to rest in your laurels. Because we're on the path, but we've not yet arrived. Sight is a product of the deep changes that happen within the saints' light. Something within you comes alive. And you begin to see that's the great fight that we're in. It's difficult to tell someone they don't see. Or for you yourself to realize that you don't see. Because This involves seeing on a level that we haven't experienced before. We see, but we don't quite see. You just don't make a decision one day to see and then that becomes a reality. It's something that God has to do and bring us through. And yet we're at jeopardy because even the book of Revelations talks about take care lest you lose what you've been given. Sight is a very tenuous thing because you can lose it and not realize that you've lost it. You can walk in darkness and not realize that you're walking in darkness. Sight is a product of your entire being. It it can't be separated into just a function of the eyes or an inner perception or awareness. Sight involves every aspect. It, It just does. When you see your whole being sees. When you come alive, it's not just part of you that's coming alive. It's the whole man that comes alive. The Lord is in our midst and the Lord is possessing the saints and taking up his abode. but we must see this to see it fully actuated. The real power that God has transmitted to the sons hinges upon the sons being able to see what they've become, to see the Lord. Otherwise, we still live in poverty. Thomas, in the book of Thomas, refers to the state of poverty in a believer. 
society predicated upon the inability to see who they are. We tend to live in poverty because of our lack of ability to see who and what we are and who and what the Lord Jesus Christ is within us on a level deep enough. This is where the war is centered. This is what will make the difference and is making the difference. This is where the breakthrough happens that radiates out and touches all of creation. It's not so much the prophecy or various acts or, or uh, other things that, that might happen. Uh, it really is about seeing. Because when you see, when you pass through one level of darkness, into a deeper level of the light that sets off like a bomb in the spirit, like an atomic bomb explosion, because the act of seeing ignites something in the spirit that is almost like a chain reaction, like an atomic bomb. And many things spiral out of that occurrence when you really enter into the realm of sight. It affects change on many levels, many dimensions. This is the door that we're at. We have to press into a deeper level of sight, a deeper level of knowing. We must keep our ear to the ground, listen for what he may speak. Listen. It's like the word that came many years ago, look and live. And there's a story somewhere in the Old Testament, I can't recall where, where the children of Israel were told to look upon, uh, I forget what it was, but they were to look upon this object, whatever it was, and they would live. It's something that we probably should take another look at Look and live. And that's what's happening. Look and live. See it and become. See it and change. We're in the midst of something so great, but we haven't seen it deep enough yet. It's in our midst. But we must press through the veil. We must pass through this level we're in and see. The shroud that has been over your spirit, over my spirit, must be lifted that our spirit will see. Because we know that sight is certainly not uh, uh, a, a function of the eyes or the mind or the soul. Sight is a function of the spirit. And we're coming into a oneness 
with our spirit, but we still don't know our spirit yet. It's foreign, the concept, to know your spirit. We don't see ourselves as our spirit because we don't really realize what we are. We, are, we see ourselves as this physical carnation, incarnation with all of its weird attributes of the soul, mind, and the body. But the wrappers are coming off of our spirit. And our spirit is what sees. We contend before the Lord today for this change to happen, for this breaking through the veil to happen that must happen. The only way to get there from here is to see another level of sight We'll talk a little bit further here on this topic. This word is highly hidden, and it's only really scraping the surface of what the Spirit of the Lord is really talking about. The warfare against the saints to keep them out of the realm of of sight is far greater than we understand. It's, it's, it's more than just out of the realm of revelation, but it's the realm of, of deep internal sight. And <clears throat> like everything, we need to let go, and I, I can't even imagine how we would do this but we need to let go of our concept of seeing. I mean, we, we, we have this concept of what sight is and how we see and how it works because this is what we've lived with all of our lives. But that concept that we have is tying the Lord's hands because there is something about this whole aspect of seeing that needs to be understood or seen or approached from an entirely different level. You know, in the book of Revelations, it was talking about who is worthy to open the book, to break the seals, whatnot, and and, and, of course, the answer was uh, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Um, and we've talked before that, that we are this living book. <clears throat> and that revelation needs to go much, much deeper than it, than it has. And literally... God has put within the hands of the sons the keys of the kingdom. And God is unlocking the sons. But there's something about sight or seeing that is on a much deeper level than we can possibly address. I, I can't even explain to you what it is I'm thinking about here because how do you redefine reality when you're breaking ground that you haven't walked before? 
But there is something about this whole aspect of really coming alive and of really beginning to see uh, through the agency of your spirit that it bypasses anything that we've ever known, where it really involves a shifting of how you have functioned as a person up till now. By default, we have functioned a certain way, you know, with the agency of the mind, the soul, the eyes. That's how we have known ourselves and how we have functioned. Yet there is something in the works that's troubling because there's another level here of seeing that involves the, the whole man, something unlike we've experienced before, but something that begins to pull you out of seeing the way you've seen. I mean, these are deep waters, but our minds have been programmed a certain way to see reality, to register what you see. You know, so we, we see things a certain way. Yet, without going, you know, too, too off the deep end, you could look at reality on an inverted level and see the opposite of what you're looking at. And that defines a whole different plane uh, that we haven't seen. But I don't really want to go down that road. But there's something that's changing within our mind, and it has to. With the renewing of the mind, there has to be a, 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 a fruit from that. You just don't receive the renewing of the mind without which there is a change that begins to happen within you. The, a, a reprogramming or a, a recalibrating of, of how you have been. I mean, otherwise, why undergo such uh, warfare and purging and purifying if the whole infusion of the mind of Christ meant really nothing. But every day that we move forward, every day that we, we walk, we're, we're gaining ground, even if it seems like we, we aren't. We're gaining ground. And what does that really mean? It means that the the indwelling of the Father and the Son is going deeper, and it means that there is something within the mind that is being replaced with the mind of Christ. The end result being that we will have the mind of Christ in its fullness. And I don't even want to put a definition of what that will mean, because I don't. I don't think that we could we could uh, imagine enough. So, as each day unfolds, there is a constant change happening within you and I, and it's the uh, mind of Christ that's taking over. And what is happening out of that? Sometimes it may seem like there is no change. But then you'll have a breakthrough. And all of a sudden things just go through a shift. But there's a shift happening most definitely. And it's how we have functioned, how we have seen, how we have understood. And that's what the enemy has fought. Because God is raising up the sons and the sons are seers. First and foremost... 
and the sons are being shown the deep things of the kingdom, the deep and hidden things, which is one of the promises that he would show you the deep and hidden things. And that is happening. And the more the sons possess this, the more the displacement in the spirit takes place and the more Satan is cast out. There's something here and something coming and something that we quite can't put our finger on, but it involves a change of our being, a change of how we have seen. And so it can be difficult to let go when you're not really certain what to let go of or how to let go of it. And that was one of the things that God spoke at the beginning of this present sojourn. We must let go of everything. Well, this is another aspect of that. But it's not something that can just be done by determination. It is something that God is working because we must let go of how we have seen what we have thought sight is. Because our, our, our present paradigm of reality is all based on the impartial or the, the partial. And And that, that's really, I think, all that we, we want to dig into here. Something is here in the midst, and something is coming. God is putting the, the key in the door within our hearts, and he's opening up a portal, a new door for us to enter into and through that is bringing a change of life. It may not seem like it right at this point. It may seem like everything is, you know, in slow motion. But I don't believe that's the case. Something is coming. Something is here. We receive this tonight, Lord. Let your work, your word, work deeply within us and bring us into the knowledge of the Lord and bring us into a knowledge of the deep things. Bring us into a whole new way of being, living, existing, not functioning through the limitations of the mind and the perceptions that we've known, but stepping outside the box in a whole different way, unlike anything that we've known. Lord, that's our prayer tonight. We're walking in deep waters. We're touching on something that we sense is here. And we're going to lean into it to get and receive this change. Amen.